Welcome back, everyone, to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan here for today on the show. I mean, what can I say? We have the incredible, the amazing, the badass, the superstar, the legendary, the one and only Ashlyn. Ashlyn, how are you today? I'm very good. Thank you for asking. And thank you for the nice introduction. Absolutely. I mean, what better way to start up? Yeah, like two things here. What better way to start up an epic Monday, but also what better way to start an epic week that to be chatting with someone as, as badass as you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, thank you. I, I take that as a big compliment. Anything I can do to make people's weeks better, that's that's what I'm here for. There you go. I love it. Now, if you are new to the channel, if you're, you know, listen, uh, recently tuned in and everything, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow helps a lot, but also most, and, but you know, another thing here is that in the description below, you're going to find all of Ashley's social media. Let's follow her. And without further more, let's discover why she's super badass, right? So <laughs> I want to start this whole conversation by throwing out, you know, the first question, which is, like what initially sparked your interest in the world of modeling? So I think I've been interested in modeling for as long as I, as long as I can remember. Um, I knew it was always something I wanted to do. I distinctly remember telling my mom when I was really young. She asked me what I wanted to do, and I said I wanted to be a model and a race car driver. So um, I think <laughs> that's always been on my radar for something I wanted to do, just because I've always been interested in fashion, and I, I like. I don't know. I love the way that modeling kind of is used as a form of self-expression in in my in my opinion. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Now, so it was between modeling and race car driving. I mean, those are like two opposites here, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I just those are uh <laughs> pretty different, but I think it gives a a good bigger picture of the kind of person I am. I love it. I love it. Now, how do you approach maintaining a healthy and balanced lifestyle while working in a demanding industry such as you know the whole world of modeling for me i don't think i don't find it that hard maybe just because i really like it i think if you're doing something you really enjoy you'll find ways to make it enjoyable and i mean yes it's demanding but i'm the kind of person who i, I like doing things i like being out and doing things and i like getting the opportunity to do things i'm the kind of person who like if i have the option to try something new or, or do something i'm gonna do it um pretty much whenever i can i like trying things even if it's taking a risk or something like that so i mean so far i haven't found too many like conflicts that it's going to have with my day-to-day -day life um it just has to do with like scheduling and working things in and as long as you stay flexible i think i think it's not too too hard i mean of course i have to like take considerations about you know maintaining myself and and maintaining a good image but i, I mean i don't think it's for me i don't think it's that hard to do those things just because i think i do them otherwise i don't think i have to drastically like go out of my way to try and like maintain an image just because I try and be pretty candid on my profiles and in my I guess just general I don't know <laughs> totally totally I get it. I mean at the end of the day it happened I mean it's it's part of the whole experience right that um that when you find the possibility to actually work on something that you love that there's going to be some tough yeah I would say like tough or you know things that maybe you don't like that much but at the same you know it's just part of the whole experience so yeah totally i love it and what is your favorite aspect of being a model oh definitely getting to meet new people um that's that's easily the the best part for me um i definitely say i'm an extra extrovert and I love talking to new people and hearing new people's perspectives so i think through modeling getting to have like I guess, a base of people who follow me. Um, it gives me chances to talk to new people like you. Um, yeah. And I really like that. I like just meeting new people. And when people reach out to me with opportunities like this, it's so exciting. Like, I get so excited. Like, this is the kind of thing that I've always wanted to do, just talk to people and and use what I have to try and help people build what they have. I just think it's so interesting. And it's something I think I've always dreamed about, even since I was young. So I think that's definitely the best thing that's come from all of this is just the opportunities because I feel like there's so many things that come down to whether you have the opportunity or you're given the opportunity to, or the right people reach out. And I feel like I've been so lucky with the people who've reached out to me and the people I've get, gotten to meet and talk to. So That's cool. So it's basically like the whole 
um, connections you are you have been able to create due to this passion of modeling, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's epic. I mean, that's like badass level three now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We're stepping in. I love it. Now, can you share like any memorable or exciting experience from your modeling career? Um, <clears throat> I think for me, most of the things that I, I found the most exciting have been like when I get to maybe travel somewhere to do a photo shoot or work with someone new or someone who I, I think is really talented. Um, I think I'm always so nervous in those situations because like, I'm like, oh, I know this person's so good. And I hope that, you know, the way I pose or, or my ideas work well with what they have in mind because I've met so many talented photographers um, that I've gotten to work with. And it's, those have all been really exciting and getting to go new places and see new things. Even um, I've done a, a few things where I've gone to like New York City and I just always love the opportunity to be in like the city and explore and try new things. Um, also kind of pivoting, I recently got to do like a, a small like fashion show and it was my first time like actually like walking and it was so exciting. I was really nervous, but um, it went really well um I did two different shows um for two different things and it, it was so much fun it was something I've always wanted to do and it's been like a long time dream so getting to do that was really really spectacular I love it and speaking about that I mean now that you mentioned you know the whole you know like uh, uh preparing I got like and I love that tell me like, how do you prepare for either for a shoot or a runway? Are there like any specific ritual going on here or, or routines, perhaps? Like, what is your thing here? Um, For me, I don't know. I mean, historically, sometimes with because I mean, a lot of people on my platform know, like I used to be a dancer. And, and back when I was a dancer before competitions, I had so many superstitions and so many rituals I had to do. But I've, <laughs> I've kind of tried to like keep myself from falling back into that mindset because I want to be able to go with the flow and I don't want to get too caught up on oh this thing this thing went wrong or I didn't get to do this one specific thing so now it's going to be a mess because I feel like if I get caught up in that mindset it can lead to situations where I already think something's going to be bad before it happens and then I it kind of is a self-fulfilling prophecy um so generally I just try and you know um, before any photo shoot or, or runway, um, I just try and spend the morning, you know, taking care of myself. Uh, I try to get good rest, um, eat healthy. But, you know, those are just things that I'm trying to think, you know, how can I make sure I feel my best mm -hmm. and, and look my best before the the event? But generally, as far as like specific rituals, I'm, I'm trying to keep keep away. There you go. OK. I mean, we all have like our thing, right, to kind of uh, get us in the right um mindset right you know either either for modeling music acting or even doing a podcast here and everything and we'll have like our thing to kind of uh so i i get it that's pretty cool cool now what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about the whole modeling uh, industry I think specifically with modeling, there's some stereotypes about the people who do it. And, and I feel like sometimes it's easy to get like pigeonholed into a very like set stereotype or, or, or character that people have for you, you know, that's very limited. And I don't think that's, that's, I wouldn't say fair because it's not like I feel I've ever, me specifically, I mm -hmm. feel very lucky that I've never had people really misconceive me. But I think sometimes people maybe think things about you or even sometimes I think some people think less um I think they might think that you're like one-dimensional or or vain because it's like oh you get your picture all the time like all you care about is is looks or the way you look but I try and make it whenever I do things where I'm talking or actually expressing myself outside of just photo shoots I try and show that like there's more to me than just the photo shoots um and I mean, I don't mind if people just like me for my photo shoots. That's fine. Um, the fact that people like me at all, I'm honored. But I really do hope that um, I'm able to beat these certain misconceptions that that's all I am or that's all I do, because I have a lot of other passions and things about me that I think 
I don't know, I'd like to share that as well. And yeah, so I think getting stuck into a a, um, a character almost or, or like a, a certain idea that people have for you is something that is, I guess, I wouldn't say an issue, but kind mm. of a downside of modeling. There you go. And I mean, plus you're badass, you're saying. So <laughs> Thank you. There you go. I mean, and now that you mentioned that you have like another, you know, like passions here, like, would you like, would you mind to, like to tell us one or two? Oh, passions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh gosh. Well, um, I'm really into, uh, making things, uh, with okay. like, my hands. So like crafting, drawing. So I know how to do like a lot of like small crafts. It's something I'm always trying to learn new, new things that I can make. Um, just because I think it's fun and it's something I've always liked. I, I like visual arts. Um, I used to paint a lot. Um, and that was something big for me. Any sort of arts and things like that. Um, and then, of course, something that I think some people know because I kind of talked about it a little bit in the past. But um, I just recently graduated from college with a degree in economics. And I know a lot of people just kind of see their major as like, you know, that's just what I'm doing for a job and I mean in some ways that is but I'm actually like really passionate about <laughs> finance and and economics and and money and things like that just because I find it really interesting um yep. I mean I know a lot of people find it boring or, or would never even think to <laughs> I don't know take it as a hobby anything more than a career but I just find it so interesting it's something that like I could read about in my spare time and it's something I, I really liked learning about and I just I don't know I love it ever, that's something else that I think ever since I've been a kid I've always been interested in that's kind of why I ended up going that path I think the two things that I've been interested in since day one I've kind of been able to branch out and pursue and I think it's great because it's two sides of me that kind of get to I don't know work together and make me who I am there you go I love it. It's so interesting, right? That even till this day, like the whole, you know, like uh, finances, like uh, economy, ma like math numbers in general, still have like this stereotype that, ooh, you know what I mean? So yeah, no, I love, I love math. Not to sound like, uh, but I do. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, totally. I love it. I mean, I used to suck. I used to suck at math, but once I realized that I was, you know, I was average. I was good with it. I was like, okay, this is not as bad as I thought back when I was a kid. I think the problem is like how they like implement it to you when you were a kid, right? Like how they approach it to you. I think that is important. And I do hope that at some point, like those type of, uh, yeah, like, you know, on, on this case, math, that they managed to find a way to make it approachable to people because once you're out of school and you are in the real world, you start to understand how, how important you need to know about numbers, right? You need to know about like all of that because, Either is that, or you're gonna like the first time, like the first time you receive your first paycheck, you're gonna spend it to God knows what, and you know what I mean. So, yeah, no, I, I totally, I completely agree. I think, I think it's too common. I, like, I think, kind of diverting here, talking about math. I hope that's okay, yeah. but um, I think it's really almost cool or trendy for people to just dismiss math as a as a, a subject um, of learning because oh it's hard and everybody hates math it's oh everybody hates math yeah. if you don't hate math then you know um there's you know certain oh well you just must be studious you just you know mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> I don't necessarily think it's about being good or being bad I think you know I, just because I like it doesn't mean I was always good at it and I'm definitely not as good at it as some people are, many people. Um, but I just think, I don't know. I think if you think about through history, all the most interesting things that, in my, well, it's totally my opinion, but a lot of, I think some of the most interesting things that we've learned have all been because of math. And it's like the basis of so many important things, you know, it's like, I love like space and things like that. And it's like, everything we know is because of people who have been able to use math. And it's, it's like, it's like the secret language of the universe it almost feels like i don't know i don't know it i think it's so much bigger than people realize especially on the high levels and i i get that people get bored with the kind of sometimes 
menial low level stuff that totally. like you were saying they learn in school and it's not built for everybody but i think if you think about it on the high level like the things that you can learn from it i think it's incredible yeah totally i mean the, what happened to me in school is that i was terrible at math so when i finished school i was like you know what i'm gonna find a degree that has no math and i thought i did right so i you know i went to college and everything and one of the one of the first assignments was economy and i was like you gotta be kidding me so the good thing is that for that time i was you know like i'm like more older but also i had like a really good teacher so he was able to kind of present it a totally different way and once you get it you start to connect the dots. You're like, oh, okay, so let's go with, you know. So I, I, as I was saying in the beginning, I, it's all about how they introduce it to you, you know. So, yeah. Cool. I love it. So those who are listening to this or watching this, when you once you're done, let's learn Let's learn some math. <laughs> uh, there you go. Now, moving on here, you know, and getting back into your whole modeling career, tell me, like, how do you handle rejection or setbacks in your career? I mean, it happens. It's inevitable. So how you, you know, like, how is that, does that, like, affect you somehow? Like, what is your thing here? I think for me, uh, it's something that I think I've worked on throughout my whole life. Um, and specifically because of, of my my past in dancing, I think I've always been able to, you know, take things in stride and take rejections how they are you know it's just oh okay so this didn't work let's figure something else that can or let's move forward I don't ever think that rejection is any reason to quit or do less or see less from yourself you know it, it's time to like work even harder you know because with my with dancing in the past you know I, I did dance as a competitive sport and I think you know there was definitely long periods where you know I did very poorly or never saw the results I wanted um, for long periods of time. And I, I remember people saying to me, they'd always be like, you know, if I was in your position, I think I probably would have quit by now. Like, I, I don't, I don't get how you keep going, but it never really crossed my mind to, to stop. And I think that's kind of just the way I am. And it's the way I am with rejections now. Um, just because maybe I'm not doing well now doesn't mean I think, oh, well, I, I should just stop because I'm never going to do well. You know, if it's something that I care about, then I'm going to keep working until, until, you know, I do get something, you know, I find that with enough time and enough work and, you know, a little bit of luck, um, you can get, you can get pretty far, you know, you might not get everything you wanted. You might not achieve all of your greatest highest dreams and that's okay I try and have reasonable expectations but I think you can sometimes get farther than you expected you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. totally totally now are there like any particular photographers or designers you dream of collaborating anytime in the near future oh in the near future that I can't say but I mean of course I mean I know I just said to set reasonable expectations but <laughs> yeah of course, I'd love to work with any of the the big fashion houses or big designer names, you know, anything in, in, you know, luxury fashion, something where I could be in a situation where it's very legitimate and, and well known, you know, anything with a, a big following. So, you know, ideally, it would be, you know, Vogue or, you know, anything like that, you know, Prada, Gucci, Miu Miu, any any of these, um, really, any fashion name that is well known, I would be honored to work with. Um, I don't know. I, I hopefully I'll work and it'll happen someday. Um, but that that would be so huge. Um, even if just one or something like that, that would be amazing. And I don't know if it will happen, but you know. I'll stay positive and keep working the best I can. Yeah. I mean, I do believe that good things happen to those who are honest, you know, like with, yeah, like th those who are honest with what, with what they're doing, right. What they're honest, that they're honest with themselves. Right. And, and yeah. Plus your pad has level like, like level six now you're so. Oh, am I working my way up through this? Mm -hmm, interview? Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, the, I mean, the, the way you're doing, I mean, I'm super sure that at the end you're going to be like not only badass, but like super, super badass, just saying, you know, <laughs> Thank you, but I yeah. love it. I love it. And can you share like any tips or secrets for posing and working the camera? 
Oh, for posing and working the camera. Actually, um, I think that's something I've improved a lot with recently. Um, and there are definitely are some things that I've learned. Um, because I think I can see it. I've never noticed anyone else talk about it, but which is good. But I think when I look back at a lot of my older photo shoots, like I can tell just in the slightest parts of my face, like I can see that I'm nervous. And I think that reflects in my body language and everything like that. Um, but I think over time, I've learned to try and look more comfortable and and I, I've learned certain like angles and things for myself. And a lot of that is really, I mean, I have to credit to the, the photographers I've worked with. I've gotten to work with some really, really amazing people, um, especially some of the people I worked with um, early, earliest. Um, yeah, there was some photographers who I worked with a lot when I was first starting and they just taught me so much. They were so open to, you know, giving me advice and things like that. And I think that helped a lot. So I think a biggest part or a big part of what's worked for me is being able to take a deep breath and focus on looking natural. Um, I think that makes a really big difference and being open to suggestions from photographers, because a lot of times they'll have an idea, they'll have their vision and, and you're trying to help help realize that and again that's kind of why I like modeling is because it's kind of a, a, an art form in my mind not to you know make it into something it's not but I, I see it that way because you're helping create something that someone has in their mind and and you know you're working with them as well as for them and things like that so yeah I think being open to what they have to say and listening and asking that's something if I had to offer a tip, it would be ask, you know, because I think sometimes people can be embarrassed and they don't want to seem like, oh, this person is not going to want to work with me if they think I don't know what I'm doing. But just even if, you know, you do know what you're doing, just be like, is there any, are there any things that I could do better? I think I asked that to pretty much every photographer that I've ever worked with. Is there anything I could do better? And they'll give you a bit of advice. And mm -hmm. I think it can help so much, you know, being open to not criticism, but critiques and things to help you improve that makes all the difference in the world you're killing it here i love it i love it but it's true that's true i love that that's true i love it and you know what let's say that one day i call you and i tell mm -hmm. you that i want to start into the whole modeling industry now okay. here's the thing zero experience so based on what you know and you know what you have experience what do you think that would be important for me to know before jumping in into this yeah into this world basically what would be important to know that it's I think that it's not as scary to get started as you might think because I think when I first wanted to get into it I was like well I don't even know how like I'm just some random girl from the middle of nowhere like no one's gonna want to work with me like there's no way I could actually get into this like oh you have to have you have to have so much money and you have to have somebody who knows somebody and you have to have all these things if you even want to have a shop but that's not that's not true um I mean I don't even know if I you know if I count as having a shop but I'm doing my best and I think it's because reach out to people you know so many of the things that I've done again it's just been like after the other talking to people and saying yes to opportunities because I think especially I don't know maybe it's just because I, I'm younger or just because of the way I am but I feel like it's so easy to get scared off by opportunities like someone reaches out and is like oh do you want to do this thing or I'd be happy to work with you and it's so easy to be like oh no like no, that's so new or that's so different or what if it goes poorly and so it could be, it's easy to just be like no I can't do that or something like that but I think if you say yes, or you give it a shot, or do it even if you're worried that it will turn out poorly, a lot of times it will turn out amazing. And reaching out to people as well. And I think that's something that I had a hard time with, especially at first. Um, but you know, a lot of times people also want to work with you. You might think, oh, there's no way they'd want to work with me, but they they might, you know? And I think um, getting recommendations, for me, I when I when I think of this, I'm thinking of photographers I've worked with, and a lot of times either they've reached out to me or maybe 
I've been like, hey, do you want to do like we've worked together in the past? Do you want to work together again? And in my mind, you know, at first I'd be like, oh, I can't do that. They're going to say no. But then they're like, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'd love to do that. And, you know, you just work it, you work it out. And so much of it comes down to just talking to people earnestly and treating people like they're real people and not thinking of them on any sort of like level like oh I could never talk to them they'd never want to talk to me or anything like that as long as you just treat people honestly and think about well what would I do in this situation you know I think things will work out you know people in my experience um and, and I know I'm very lucky I, I just have good luck sometimes I guess but people are generally very very nice and very open to me and I know that I, in that some ways, some people are going to be like, well, people are, are not nice to me. And in that way, I, I guess I'm just lucky. So maybe, maybe my advice isn't valid, but I don't know. I think, I think you'll be surprised. I think if you're trying to get into it, give it a shot, give it everything you've got, reach out to people. Some people won't respond. Some people will, and just work with what you get and go from there. Ask them for, okay, well, maybe we can't work together again, but do you know anybody else who might want to work with me? And you'll you'll find you'll find people and hopefully everything will work out for you there you go i love it i mean I, I tell you what if i ever become a supermodel and if at some point i win no 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 and if at some point i write my memoirs i'll be mentioning you on my thank you speech like this wouldn't have been possible without you know ashlyn advice here oh i'm honored I'm, I, I'm so honored honestly if i got my name mentioned in a book that would be crazy <laughs> that's gonna happen trust me i love it and tell me, like, what has been the most important lesson that you have learned throughout your, yeah, throughout your whole modeling career, career at the moment? Most important lesson. I think it's that, I think I've learned a lot about myself and, and that people I think this is going to sound so, I think, I, I don't know how to say this without it coming off wrong, but I think I realized that people might like me more than I thought they would. I think, again, I, I, I always kind of didn't want to do things on the internet because I kind of thought that people wouldn't really like me um, or that I didn't actually have what it took or, or that I didn't have the right look or I think it's so easy for me to to notice all the things that are wrong with myself. And I, I think I figured, oh, everybody else is going to notice me too. And no one, no, you're never going to have a shot. Again, I think I kind of dismissed a lot of things before I even gave them a shot. Um, and I was like, you know, especially with the whole becoming an influencer thing, you know, that that was so out of my, my realm. Like I always saw Obviously, I've, I'm on the internet. I've seen other people. And I, and I was always like, well, that's them. That's not me. Like, I knew deep down that that was something I wanted. But I just thought, I was like, oh, but they're so, they're so vibrant. They're so everything. And I'm just, just this or just that. Um, but I think I was so surprised when, you know, I put myself out there. And I think when I went to, to, college and I started meeting people and I started doing this modeling stuff I was so surprised by how people were like you know I do want to hear more or I do want to see more of what you do or I think your your modeling's good and and things like that and I think it's given me a lot more self-confidence um in myself uh that I didn't really have before and it's kept me from dismissing myself so often um so for me I think that's the biggest thing I think I think a lot of people are like that, that I've met and people just need something because I think most people are a lot more spectacular than they realize and they just need the right people to be, come along. And I think it's, especially these days um, or maybe just the things I've seen, I think people can be very critical um, or, or because of the internet, I feel like people believe in like full I guess they would say honesty, but I think people need to be, I guess, I don't know, have the chance to have people say nice things about them and meet nice people and all these things to realize like 
I don't know, maybe I just haven't been around the right people or I haven't been hearing the right things to realize all that I can do. Because I think when you're able to see these things about yourself, you can do so much more. And I don't know. I think that's that's the kind of thing that I've learned is that, I guess, just self-confidence. I love it. Super, super badass. <laughs> You know, I do think that perhaps like one of the uh, like one of the things that have worked for you. I mean, if I if I uh, if I can say is the fact that you're uh, as I was saying in the beginning that you're honest to it, right? The fact that you're doing it because you like it, you know, you love it is something that actually makes you, you know, that actually brings you joy. And perhaps that is when people see, you know, what you do, like and all of that, like how, like how, um, what's the word here that I'm looking, like how, yeah, like how passionate you are about. I mean. I do think that besides people liking it, perhaps like they like somehow they get inspired, right? Because you are showing that you know that is that is possible. You're showing that um that you can actually do it, and at the same time that you're doing it, you you can have fun. So I think that is also kind of important to know that regardless of what we're doing, yeah, we can have fun. You know, we we can't be all serious and focus and all of that. I mean, it's sometimes it's cool to just have fun, and 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 and, and you are showing that. And I think that it's awesome, and, and and I think that is why a lot of people follow you, but also sees you as a you know as a role model. So that's cool. Well, thank you. I definitely, I definitely try to. I I I try and keep a sense of you know spontaneity and excitement in the things that I do. But honestly, I feel like especially with what I do, it's hard not to have fun. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I feel like there's so many more serious things in life that you need to focus on and, and put serious energy towards that if there's something that you can be more lighthearted about or put a positive mindset to then then you should you know sometimes I feel like people already go into something knowing that it that it's going to be miserable beforehand and I kind of talked about how like it's I, even I can fall into that mindset um and I, I try not to I, I try and put a conscious effort into not doing that because sometimes you can decide before something even happens that it's going to be bad or that it's going to be boring and if you go in thinking well maybe it's going to be great then maybe it will you know <laughs> um i think mindset has to do a lot with things and obviously there's situations where no amount of positive mindset's going to change it but i don't know i think a lot of life is about how you approach it you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah i like it That is epic and awesome. And you. you know what? My final question. So okay. we can all enjoy and relax after a couple of typical, interesting, badass, super questions here and there. Okay. What do you think that could be? Yeah, that yeah, that could be the title for this episode we just got. Oh, what could be the title? Um, I don't know. I guess really when. Coming up with titles and things like that. I don't know if I have the the most creative mind, I guess. Just I don't know, discussing discussing life and honesty uh, with Ashlyn Sparks and <laughs> I don't know. I wish I could give you a better answer, but how about how to be super badass? Not just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but Well, what what was it? The first one discussions of life and honesty. I mean, yeah, you, you I'll were, take it. Yeah. I mean, we have talked about that. You know that that was kind of the, like the main topic had. You know, during this whole conversation, we didn't mention like a whole. Yeah, I like it. Discussions of life. Yeah. Whatever you want, you know, it's your you're you're the creative director here. I'm just lucky to be invited onto the show. So totally. I mean, it's gonna look super cool. That's oh, thank you. I mean, yeah, that's a winner. I've enjoyed myself. Um, yeah. And you know, like at the end, what can I say, right? I mean, as I was saying, like the fact that you're pursuing something that makes you happy. I mean, we all know that, yeah, it tends to get difficult like every now and then, or it's going to be, I want to, yeah, like, like a little bit complicated, you know, because the fact that you're basically starting something from scratch into actually like your brand here, like your name to it. I mean, we all know that that takes time, but you're showing results. And as I was saying at the beginning, you know, like a couple of minutes before, 
the fact that you're showing that that is possible, I think that is motivational enough for everyone, especially and especially right now during this whole crazy days when people suddenly is like more anger, you know, like more angry, more desperate, like more sad, you know, like all of that. The fact that we can see someone as you who are showing it, who are, yeah, who are showing up, who is having fun, who is you know, telling people like, hey, this is, you know, you can actually follow your passion, regard, you know, regardless if you are want to start like modeling, acting, music, photography, directing, like whatever you want, you are showing that is that following your dreams is possible. And I think that is like the like the important lesson here and people should, you know, pay more attention to it. So no, I mean, absolutely. I guess that's one of the main messages I want to get across is you don't have to give up your passions just because you're getting older and maybe you're trying to figure out how to make your way in the real world, you know, because I think there's this idea that like, oh, well, I, I need to spend all my time making money or I need to spend all my time going towards my future. And yes, it's important to plan for your future and make smart decisions and do all these these mature and wise things but that doesn't mean you can't you have to give up some part of yourself that makes you happy you know you can do both i know sometimes it seems like there aren't enough hours in the day but and, and sometimes i think it will take a lot of planning and you might have to sometimes give up some things that maybe you wanted to do but you don't always have to and and, and you can make it work and i i urge everyone to give their passions a chance or maybe take up something that they always wanted to try um, because it can be so fulfilling and I think it will spread into the rest of your life and even if at first you feel like oh I'm so bad at this like why was I even trying this is so ridiculous I should just go back to doing what I have to do and then existing the rest of the time it's like Give it a chance, give yourself a chance, give yourself some grace, I think. Be be kind to yourself. That's something I think a lot of people are too hard on themselves and dismiss themselves and don't do that. If you're kind to yourself, give yourself a shot and be kind to others when you're talking to them and reaching out. Just just try and be just be nice. Um, I think I think you can do a lot more than maybe you thought, you know? And maybe it comes off corny or cheesy, what I'm saying. And some people will just, oh, she's she's an optimist, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't understand. And maybe I don't understand everyone's situation, but I don't think that there's any, there's any downside to just trying to be happy and trying to make other people happy. I'm just gonna drop the mic basically, so. <laughs> Incredible. I love it. I love all of the words you said. Yeah. You know, I'm uh, speechless now. I love it. And again, I mean, thank you so much for making this happen, Ashley. I mean, I'm I, I'm honored to have the chance like to speak with someone. I mean, you know, besides besides being super badass, but also super talented, super nice, and super kind to it. You know, as I was saying, I'm super I'm super sure that there's people out there who sees you as a role model. And yeah, thank you for making this happen. I also want to thank those who you know check this whole episode. Now, as I said in the beginning of the description below, you're gonna find all of Ashley in social media. Now, because we discover why she's super badass, let's just make her viral. Hashtag Team Ashlyn. Again, thank you. <laughs> keep rocking, keep shining, keep yeah, keep doing what you do. And I'll see you in the next one.